behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we warmly welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Richard Wong, and it is my pleasure once again to be today's moderator. In this session, we are pleased to have one of the most outstanding coaches in the world of badminton. Please allow me to introduce Dr. Niels Christian Kaldo from Denmark, who will talk to us today about a topic of great importance, importance injury prevention in badminton. Before handing over to Dr. Kaldo, allow me to tell you a little about our guest. His highlights in his playing career is he was on the Thomas, New, um, Thomas Cup silver team in 2004 and 2006. He's a winner of the German Open in 2002. He has been ranked in the top 10 in the world in men's singles. His medical career includes orthopedic sur surgeon with specialty in arthroscopic and sports surgery. He has a diploma in sports medicine and he is a board member of the Danish Society of Sports Medicine. Good afternoon, Dr. Kaldo, and welcome to our program. Thank you for joining us and receiving us from your home in Copenhagen. We invite you to take control and share your screen. Okay, perfect. So, uh, thank you, Richard. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Um, I'm very uh, happy and honored to be invited to talk about this uh, very important uh, and crucial topic. Um, my hope is that uh, all of you can take some of my uh, ideas uh, and pass them on and hopefully we can prevent injuries uh, in, in, uh, in our best players and of course also in our junior players. Um, and uh, we can make uh, badminton a safer place uh, to be. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, no disclosures for this talk. Um, start with the, the take home message. Um, there's uh, almost no evidence uh, on injury prevention in badminton. So until we get it, we have to uh, uh, learn from other sports. We have to be uh, clever. We have to use our common sense and um, then the players, they need to uh, be smart instead of uh, just uh, train hard. Um, so um, today's lecture uh, is um, we'll try to talk about uh, the main injury problems in badminton and then uh, we'll look uh, into how we can prevent injuries in badminton in, in a general perspective and uh, look at some injury uh, that we actually know something about, uh, especially from other sports. Um, so before we start, we just need to get it right. What, what is an injury? And uh, the BWF, they, in the, the Sports Science Committee, they uh, two years ago uh, initiated a consensus paper on uh, what, what an injury is and how to collect uh, injury data. And uh, this uh, is soon to be published. Um, and, and the injury definition is that uh, any physical injury sustained by a player uh, during a uh, match or training, regardless if further diagnostic uh, tests uh, uh, were, were done uh, uh, or if playing time was lost. And, and it means that this is actually all, uh, all kind of complaints. Uh, and, and it's not only the, the top of the iceberg. We, we actually get all, all these subclinical uh, science which can lead to uh, injury in the future and, and, and I think that's uh, very important and in a, a progress from earlier uh, injury uh, papers. Um, so uh, what do we actually know about uh, injuries? Uh, well there is there are like uh, 100 papers uh, on injury uh, and uh, if you look at the uh, figure to the right, you can see in, in the bottom right that, that only a few of them are about elite uh, badminton players and only a few are about uh, uh, junior elite players. And, and uh, if you look at the, the papers over a, a time frame, then since the 90s, there's been no uh, studies on uh, elite players outside of Asia. And uh, in, there has been only three to four studies since 2000 on Asian uh, players uh, divided on a couple of uh, senior elite players, uh, some college players and some junior players. So, so actually we, we haven't got that many uh, good papers on injuries. And, and if you look at the, the pyramid to the left, you can see the, uh, the level of evidence and, and the, 
if you are in the top of the pyramid, there's high evidence. And if you are in, in the bottom of the pyramid, you have a, a low evidence. And most of the papers uh, we see in badminton, they are around here. Uh, so it's retrospective, prospective cohorts or case reports. And of course, uh, we can still use it, but, but, but it's not always that reliable. And um, especially if, if some of the papers are, uh, are older. Yeah. But, uh, but, but what we know is that um, most of the injuries, they occur in the lower extremities and um, uh, especially around the knee, we see a lot of injuries. We see a lot of uh, ankle sprains. Um, the lower back also seems to be quite a, a, a frequent problem. And uh, especially for senior players, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, shoulder injuries, maybe not uh, time loss injuries, but, but we have uh, injuries uh, and, and, and a lot of the players that play with ongoing pain. Uh, so it's, it's definitely worth uh, uh, looking at the shoulder as, as well. Um, <clears throat> then uh, we know that uh, some of the very serious injuries uh, are the ACL rupture, which Carolina Marin suffered, uh, unfortunately, again, and, and the Achilles tendon rupture, which we also uh, now and then see in, in the uh, elite players uh, on the highest level. Um, so um, since uh, the game is evolving, um, has it led to any change in injuries? Uh, we know that uh, if you look at, at uh, the game, how it was played in the 80s, the, the game was slower, the, the pace was slower, uh, the players uh, didn't do hop smash, jump smashes, they, they didn't do dives like, like uh, the players do today. And uh, uh, if you look at the game today, it's um, it's a totally other game uh, in the men's single. It's, it's so much more aggressive and uh, it puts a lot of uh, uh, pressure on, um, especially the lower extremities with all the jumps and dives. And, um, and it's, it's not only in the, in the men's single, but also the men's double and the ladies doubles and the ladies singles, they have evolved quite a lot. But actually we don't know if, if if this has led to any changes in, 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 in the injuries. Um, and and we, we therefore need to conduct more studies to see if, if there is a change of, of injury types uh, and pattern. Um, um, <clears throat> we know um, uh, from, uh, or I did a, a review of the literature for uh, half a year ago to, to look at the demands uh, in badminton, uh, uh, because BWF, they, they needed to do a, a risk uh, analysis of, uh, of doping in badminton. And, uh, and here I found that the rally time has actually gone up um, over the last uh, 10, 15 years. It's not much, but it, it has gone up and, and the rally breaks as well. So uh, we, we also know that the, the efficient playing time is, is, uh, is lower. Uh, but, but uh, for instance, in the double, the intensity has gone up. There are um, more shots per second, and not in the men's singles, uh, however. But, but we see this uh, change uh, of game. I, however, I, I don't think that, that the demands have changed so much over the last 10 years. But um, I think the training has, has changed and, and um, there are more in intensive training. And uh, I also think that especially some of the non-Asian countries, they also now train more than, uh, than they did before. And, and, and this also may lead to, to more injuries than, than we have seen before. We don't know yet, but, um, but so therefore we need to, to conduct more studies. Um, okay, um, now, Let's go into some more uh, uh, specific injuries. And um, if we look at this uh, unfortunate injury for Lee Chen Wei, uh, where he uh, has a, a lateral ankle sprain um, in the forehand corner, a very typical injury and a very frequent injury. Uh, I think uh, almost all uh, professional 
elite players. They have um, they have experienced uh, a lateral angle sprain uh, uh, on their uh, or in their career. Um, it is um, it is a it can be a serious injury. Uh, it can uh, lead to uh, chronic instability, and there can also be uh, cartilage uh, problems in in the in the ankle joint, and it can lead to uh, early arthritis in the joint if if you have uh, a lot of uh, recurrences. And uh, normally, the players they they get quite fast back on the court, but but it can be uh, uh, an injury that can cost uh, lost practice, lost tournaments. Um, and um, the good thing about it is that we can actually prevent recurrences. And uh, uh, there are uh, good papers showing that if you do a prophylactic neuromuscular uh, training program, um, and if you use sports tape, uh, you can actually avoid uh, some of these uh, injuries. And um, so, so I, I think it's important to do that. I and mean, some they use uh, the sports tape for the rest of their career. Um, maybe it's not necessary to, to, to use more than three to six months after an injury, but maybe better be safe than sorry. Um, uh, technology has evolved and, and now there's uh, a new uh, uh, thing on the market, uh, which is called a sprainer. It's a patch that you attach on the outer side of the shoe and, and um, it lowers the, the, the friction uh, between the uh, <clears throat> surface and the shoe and thereby brings the, the, the shoe or the foot in, in, in inversion and, and thereby uh, uh, reducing the risk of uh, ankle sprains. And, and there's a very good paper on this in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, where they have done the, uh, a, ni a nice study and uh, they lower the risk of uh, recurrences uh, when they use this uh, device. Um, and uh, here you can see on the left side how uh, the friction uh, 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 between the surface and the shoe uh, makes uh, you vulnerable for a distortion. And on the right side, you see how the patch makes sure that the friction is lowered and then the foot goes into inversion. So I think it, it looks like a, a very nice uh, thing, a place to start uh, to uh, be able to prevent uh, uh, distortions. Here we have it again. <laughs> So um, yeah, this is um, this is the worst uh, worst nightmare for Carolina Marin for uh, a few months ago. It's uh, it's a very devastating injury, um, very unfortunate for for Carolina. And uh, as you can see, uh, when you uh, when the player lands on her left uh, knee in this block jump, uh, she suffers an ACL injury. Um, uh, we don't know uh, the extent of these ACL injuries in badminton uh, on the elite level. Uh, there is a study by Kimura uh, from Japan where he looks at uh, uh, 21 uh, cases and uh, it's mainly women and uh, they suffer the, the ACL tear in, in, the, in the round head side in these block jumps. Um, and if you look at the, the picture to the right, you can see that they land in this high uh, valgus angle. Um, and uh, we, we know from other sports like soccer and, and handball that uh, it's typical that they get these uh, ACL injuries when they land uh, in a high uh, position so that they are not so flexed in their knees and uh, they land with this high valgus uh, stress, uh, and um, and uh, and this uh, this it seems to be possible to uh, to prevent these injuries, especially in handball and soccer. They have uh, been uh, very good at uh, establishing neuromuscular programs, uh, and um, they have uh, in especially in handball they have looked at how they could change the technique and and make the players land with the uh, with more flexed uh, knees uh, and and thereby reducing the risk of injury and um, 
the sad thing is that when they stop to to do this uh, neuromuscular training programs uh, uh, the acl injury rate uh, 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 got high again so this uh, actually works in other sports and i think we can use the same especially for for the young uh, women which uh, uh, seems to be uh, more vulnerable to uh, to this kind of uh, injury and um, uh, we can do some video analysis of players and see how their technique uh, uh, is, especially in the round head side and the block when they do these block jumps. And if they land uh, with uh, less flex uh, flexion in the knees, uh, it might be a good idea to look at uh, at some uh, uh, footwork and uh, train uh, landings with uh, more flexed knees. This is only speculation. It hasn't been, doc been, doc been documented, but uh, I think uh, we 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 should try it because uh, it it uh, it's definitely a, a very serious injury. Um, so um, we also see that 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 if you do these uh, training programs uh, uh, and if if there's good compliance, then you you can avoid the. Uh, these uh, injuries. Um, so I definitely think it's it's worth trying. Um, okay. Um, then we know that um, when you do uh, some specific training for the hamstrings, um, especially the uh, the exercise to the right, which is a, a kettle swing exercise, and the Romanian deadlift on the right to the bottom, you. Uh, you activate the medial part of the hamstring. And, and this we know is especially good at stabilizing the ACL. So I would recommend these two exercises, uh, especially for the women. And we also know that this Nordic hamstring exercise is a very good hamstring exercise. Uh, so I think it could also be good to include this in a, in a training program. Furthermore, this Nordic hamstring exercise to the left uh, is also very uh, good at um, reducing the risk of uh, hamstring injuries in soccer players. And, and since we know there are strains in the, in the hamstrings in badminton as well, I, I would say it, it's, it, it, it could be a good exercise to include in a, in a strengthening program, um, even though that I have no uh, evidence to support the uh, this, but uh, I think it should, it, it should be included. Then uh, another serious injury uh, in badminton is the Achilles tendon rupture. And here you see Sosanov uh, sustaining one um, on the baseline, which is where it often uh, occurs. Um, and if you look at his uh, foot, <clears throat> it's uh, in line with the direction of movement here. You see in the middle uh, of the picture, you see it's in line of the uh, direction forward. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, we have here to the right, you see that uh, in a normal scissor kick jump, the foot is placed uh, in the direction of the sideline. And, and we actually did a, a study uh, where we looked at how much uh, the Achilles tendon in load is loaded when, when you land uh, like Sosunov and when you land with the foot pointing in the direction of the sideline. And uh, it showed that there was a, a 25 increase in load of the tendon when you land uh, <clears throat> like, like Sosunov here. So, it's uh, it's probably uh, one of the reasons why um, why people they sustain these Achilles tendon ruptures. So we 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 should focus on learning the players uh, to to land with the foot pointing uh, outwards, uh, directed against the sideline, um, and uh, <clears throat> it may be important to 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 do a upper body rotation. Uh, to be able to do this and uh, and and you see also he has less upper body rotation when he lands and then he probably land with his foot in, in this position um okay uh, now let's have a talk about the the some of the overload injuries um, and um, we uh, we know that um, 
there are a lot of problems with the overload injuries when uh, when uh, the the junior become senior and they start to train more and um, we did uh, a study for three years ago at the world junior uh, championship um, in canada and um, what we found was that 50 percent of um, of these players they have had a serious injury lasting more than than 28 days uh, not all of these were overuse injuries some were were also acute injuries, but what was worryingly was that we found 11 of these players, uh, 164 players, they have had a stress fracture. Um, and, and this is a really, really serious overuse injury. And I, I think it's, it's, it's not okay that our junior players, they sustain stress fractures. Uh, and I think it is a serious problem that we need to uh, face and we need to look more into um what uh, when we looked at uh, how much the players they trained overall uh, we were not able to uh, to prove that there was a direct relationship between um, high loads uh, or a lot of uh, training hours and and significant injuries but when we looked specifically at uh, stress fractures we noticed that that uh, the, the, the players who have had stress fractures, they, they train more. If you look at uh, this column here and you look at the age 13 to 15, they did in average 21 hours of badminton training. And if you look at the, the other group, which had no fra uh, stress fractures, they only did uh, around 15 hours of uh, training. And when they were above uh, 15 years uh, of age, they, they, they did almost 30 hours of training. It's really uh, a lot of training and, and the, the, the cohort or the, the group without stress fractures, they only did 19 hours of training. So it seems as if uh, the high uh, uh, training hours, they, it, it can lead to uh, stress fractures. Um, so, so we definitely need to look at how much do our uh, players train and, and we can use this rule that, that when uh, young athletes they train and compete more hours per week than their age then the risk of over overuse injury rises to more than 70% and, um, and, and it, we really need to uh, be concerned about how much these players they, they train um, and then slowly progress it. And, and maybe that's the key uh, that, that we need. You can train a lot of hours, but you need to progress very, very slowly over time uh, with these junior players. And then you also need to look at uh, how uh, they develop. Um, if, uh, uh, if they have a, a very uh, a fast uh, growth, uh, they, we need to adjust uh, how much they train and so on and so on. Uh, <clears throat> um, another thing that I think we should uh, have a very careful look at, uh, that is um, uh, how we, uh, we load these players. And, uh, and um, uh, we, need to, we need to observe these players better. And, uh, uh, earlier, we did just uh, normal injury surveillance where we looked at the time loss injuries and, um, and uh, when we, we did this, we, we didn't notice all these subclinical signs uh, of overloading and, uh, and therefore uh, uh, we, we, missed, we missed all the important signs and, and with, with the, a new approach, with the approach with the injury definition I talked about before, we get all, uh, all the complaints uh, when, which you see in the, the big circle here. And uh, some of these complaints, they won't turn into serious problems, but, but uh, a lot of them will turn into medical attention problems and time loss uh, problems. So, so we need to, to start to um, observe the players for these signs of uh, early uh, injury. And, uh, and we can do this uh, by asking them every week 
um, uh, the Oslo Sports Trauma Research Center, they have developed a questionnaire which, uh, which uh, can be used on a weekly uh, basis where we ask the player, um, uh, have they had any discomfort, have they felt any pain? And, um, and then we can uh, uh, look at this in a medical team and we can uh, talk to the coaches about these uh, small problems and then we can uh, change uh, how the, the training uh, uh, goes for the upcoming weeks. And um, I think it's, it's very, very important that we do these small changes all the time. And, and to be able to do that, we need to know the, how the athletes they are uh, doing and uh, um, and and if we we use these questionnaires, you can see that uh, we uh, detect so much more of these problems. Uh, you can see here to the left that uh, there's like uh, seven to ten times uh, more uh, uh, problems that that we can detect in this way, and uh, and then we can we can start to to to. Uh, change the training in a way that um, uh, that there's a less risk of uh, injury. Um, another thing that I think is important is that we try to monitor a load and uh, and for now there are different options. Uh, some they, they use uh, heart rate, uh, some they use uh, small uh, GPS uh, on the shoes and uh, 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 another way is to uh, look at how uh, how the players they uh, rate uh, each training uh, and uh, they rate it uh, with this Borg scale and then they multiply it with the uh, with the minutes that they have trained and then you get uh, an idea of the load. I know, of course, it, it's it's difficult with with load in badminton because uh, if you do a lot of uh, smashes, you might not feel so exhausted, but you put a lot of load on your shoulder. But, but this could be a, a way of controlling um, load. So um, I, I think uh, it's uh, worth trying uh, to, to monitor the load in, in this way. Um, uh, then it's important to, uh, to change the load uh, on a daily basis uh, because we all know that our body doesn't work the same way every day. Then we have had a bad night's sleep. Uh, then we have uh, some stress at school or we have some stress with our uh, girlfriend or boyfriend and, um, and we have sore legs or we have had a hard uh, training yesterday. So we need to alter this load daily. Maybe we have a plan uh, for uh, uh, six weeks, but, but we still have to change it every day according to the symptoms that we, we, uh, we experience uh, with the players. And um, you can also use this wellness score. And if you have a, a poor wellness score, you can reduce some of the load in your training. And, it's pretty easy. You can uh, you can rate your fatigue, your sleep quality, your general muscle soreness, and your stress levels and your moods. And uh, if you uh, if you are in this uh, uh, this column, uh, then you should definitely uh, try to reduce uh, some of the intensity uh, of the um, of the training. Um, <clears throat> Then I think it's very important uh, that we know that there are uh, periods that are uh, more risky. And um, nowadays, when when we haven't got this uh, uh, summer break as we had uh, before, it's it's maybe a, a different problem. But over Christmas time, we know that there is a, a period of um, uh, where we have less tournaments and the players, they, they may take some uh, months off. And, and we know that after such a period, uh, there is a higher risk of, um, of injury. And uh, it's important that we try to, to stay fit uh, in these um, out-of-season um, 
uh, breaks and um, uh, of course the players they need to have some kind of rest but but we also need to to uh, be aware that they are uh, in a higher risk uh, when they get back from these uh, breaks and, and we need to carefully uh, progress the training after uh, these breaks uh, then we also know that uh, in uh, in other periods uh, we have uh, we have a uh, uh, higher risk of uh, of sustaining injuries and uh, we know that if you have a very uh, stressful period uh, when you have exams it's not all players that are 100 percent professionals and we we need to reduce the uh, the the loading we we know that when players they have uh, been uh, traveling abroad and with jet lag uh, it's a lot of stress to the body we we we, we need to uh, reduce the load for a period after after these um, uh, these travels um, then we also know that when we start training again after an injury uh, it's it's common sense but um, maybe it's not that many that are familiar with uh, with this uh, uh, rule of 10 percent that you shouldn't increase the load more than 10 percent if you if you do so you 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 may uh, have a 50 percent higher risk of injury so um, so this 10% rule is, um, is, is, is quite good. It's, uh, it's still a little difficult to, uh, to use in badminton because um, the, the training is so uh, multifactorial and uh, it's so much easier to do it in, in running or bicycling or swimming, but, but still Please try to look look to this uh, when you adjust your programs and planning programs uh, for a, a player who's returning from an injury. Um, it's, uh, it's very important. Um, so um, this was um, a, a brief um, talk about what is uh, the evidence of injury prevention in badminton which is uh, very low we don't know uh, much uh, so we need to learn from uh, the other sports which have done uh, more uh, studies on injury prevention and then uh, we also need to uh, look at how we plan uh, and I, I really think that we can plan uh, and uh, thereby avoiding a lot of injuries if we are uh, clever and um, uh, but it but it uh, but it's important that we listen to the players and uh, and the players they tell us uh, what kind of injury uh, problems they have and also the small complaints we need to listen to them um, and then i think it's important that we start to monitor uh, the load uh, we start to uh, monitor uh, all the small complaints that they have. Um, at the moment, we are doing a, a prospective study in Denmark um, over the next uh, year where we monitor all the best uh, uh, youth uh, badminton players. Uh, we give them questionnaire every week and then we ask them about if they've had any uh, new uh, complaints and um, and then we asked them how they felt the, the load was in the, in the, the the week they have passed and hopefully we can learn a lot from this study and to tell you more about um, how much we can load these players how many tournaments uh, we can uh, let them play uh, for for a season and, and see if there's like a cut off where for, for the different age groups uh, so so we can avoid some of the injuries in the future. So with this, um, I would say thank you for the time and um, I hope you have some questions uh, which I can uh, answer. Um, thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Caldo. We'll now move on to the question and answer section. Please, if, there have, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to share, write them down in the chat box. All right, we have reached the end of today's webinar. Do you have any final words you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, yeah. This was uh, just a part of uh, injury prevention. Uh, I would say another part is, um, is maybe to look at the, uh, how you eat. Um, and uh, that's just a whole new uh, uh, theme. And we can talk a lot about that. Um, Another thing is about uh, how your mental health is. Um, we don't know so much about that, but uh, it also may interfere with uh, uh, the likelihood of getting injuries. So uh, I think it's also important for you coaches to look into how your athletes, they do uh, with the mental health as well um, and um, be able to to correct some of the, uh, the, the training plans uh, according to their mental health and not only looking at um, if they, they feel sore or if they feel a little tired. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing such an interesting talk. Um, I'm sure it helped a lot of us coaches. Uh, it's been very enriching talking with you. And you know, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. You're welcome. Okay, so on behalf of Badminton Pan America, we thank you for your participation and hope you enjoyed today's session. Stay well and stay safe.